In this episode of Health Beat, we look at South Africa's water supply and how vulnerable we are to waterborne disease. You can't take a human being. I don't feel like I'm so rich. I'm expecting to have a life high, healthy, high, right? You know. If you discharge untreated sewage, you're going to damage not only um, health, human health, but remember the receiving environment is not meant to be a sewage pond. Here with Baker Caesar's Health Beat. I'm Mia Malan. Thanks for joining us. You with Health Beat, Baker Caesar's monthly television show. Thanks for watching. Only 0.5% of the world's water can be used for human consumption. But that water first needs to be cleaned, or it can cause cholera, diarrhea, or polio. Climate change, with its increase in droughts and floods, makes water more likely to be contaminated with viruses or bacteria that can cause these diseases. The disastrous floods we saw in Durban last year, for instance, increased the likelihood of harmful germs circulating in water sources. And in areas without clean tap water, cholera can quickly spread, as we saw in Hammond's Kraal this year. So authorities need to be vigilant in their quest for clean running water. But South Africa lacks that vigilance, as seen in the latest Blue Drop report, which tells us how clean our water is. A snapshot of water tested in Pumalanga reveals that in four of five facilities, it's unsafe for drinking. In KwaZulu-Natal, on the other hand, three quarters of plants pump out safe drinking water. To discuss the health implications of dirty water, I'll be joined by Tom Boyles, infectious diseases specialist at the health organization Right to Care and water scientist Aisha Laher from WISA, the Water Institute of Southern Africa. But first, we find out what some communities are doing to ensure that cholera detected in the Vaal River system doesn't make it into household taps. From the air, it could be a lovely waterfall standing out against the high felt winter backdrop. But down on the ground, the stench is overpowering. It's raw, untreated sewage. <laughs> Lawrence Majoro is an environmental activist in Bopilong, which falls under the Mfuleni Local Council. He says this effluent comes from the dysfunctional reed spray water treatment plant close to Bupilong. The township has been around since the 1950s. Part of the problem is that the infrastructure hasn't kept up with its growing population. We are the community members. We're supposed to have the good life. You know that the pigs, the pillar molding, whatever, but you can't take a human being. I don't feel like I'm so rich. I'm expecting to have a life healthy, right? You know. Pipes, sewers, and manholes are not maintained. This resident can't even use the toilet in his house because the sewage ends up on his doorstep. Majora worries about people's health. This thing, it all cost into a cholera. So we don't want to experience the, the, such cholera in Val because I cholera. So again, even in the our government, they can take the community serious. But we know about cleaning our own river. Hammond's Kraal is just outside Tswane. In May, there was a cholera outbreak where more than 20 people died. Cholera is caused by a germ that spreads when contaminated sewage isn't disposed of properly. Majoro helps organize awareness events about water safety for residents of Bopilong. 
Naka community ago, Naka how to wash wood, how to wash your hands for the sake of this disease in our community. So again, now some community are about to have a little bit of a the resources that one able to say for whatever want to say because re 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 check re check all that yeah unemployment unemployment is other issue or maybe you can return to community or can the corner or tap on that so that thing that thing or else hello have another resources that one able to say a hundred mole sample from this sewage fountain on the Red Sprint has more than a hundred thousand counts of E. coli according to tests done by Randwater this year. E. coli is a germ that lives in dirty water and can cause severe diarrhea. Safe E. coli levels are below 130 counts per 100 mils. From the reed spray treatment works, sewage flows towards the Val River, a major water source to five provinces. Recent tests found cholera downstream near the Free State town of Barres. Mike Gady lives on the water at Loch Val. It looks idyllic, but you dare not go in. I have stepchildren who, when they were young, used to jump in the, in the river with their friends, pick up the mud, and have mud fights with it. Nowadays, they'd be picking up raw sewage. He says less than half of the pump stations around here actually work. Instead of sewage being treated, it, it goes straight into the river, into the Val. Mike is a member of an action group called Save the Val Environment. It's taken several government departments to court over the continued pollution of the Val and its tributaries. Now they've been ordered to come up with a plan by mid-August. Judge issued an order on this that the respondents would produce a plan which would be in the form of an affidavit and they're given about six weeks to do this. Then Save the Val must accept that plan and, and then it'll become part of the court order. Here's what the Department of Water and Sanitation had to say. Indeed, there is work currently underway and the minister is going to respond accordingly. Lawrence says the people of Bupilong are getting impatient. Unfortunately, I'm not going home because I'm going to talk to you about the after I'm going to eat. That report was compiled by Mohali Maloy and Yolanda Mitseki. Stay with us. After the break, we talk to a doctor who explains why dirty water can transmit diseases such as cholera. You with Bigger Caesar's Health Beat. I'm Mia Malan and we're discussing the links between poor water maintenance and our health. With me is infectious diseases specialist Tom Boyles, who works for the organization Right to Care. Tom, thanks for joining us today. What are the links between infectious diseases and dirty water? There are so many links that I probably would divide it up into the, the kind of pathogens that can be spread by water. Um, we often start with the small ones, which are viruses. And so um, hepatitis A and hepatitis E, which people may have heard of, are spread by water. And then bacteria. So people have heard of E. coli, um, things like typhoid and cholera, which has been recently in the news, um, a number of other bacteria. And then slightly larger organisms, um, sometimes free living ones like ame amoebae, can cause us things like amoebic dysentery. And essentially, these organisms, most of the organisms I've discussed, uh, are present in the, in the gut of either a human, sometimes an animal, and that gets, um, comes out in stool and if that stool contaminates water that somebody then drinks, then they will become at risk of becoming infected with that organism. Some of the organisms live freely in the environment, but largely it's um, something that's essentially come from the gut of one person or an animal into the mouth through drinking water, causing the disease. So there's clearly a lot of diseases that we can get from dirty water. And one of those that we saw in South Africa this year is cholera. 
how likely is it that the source of cholera in places like Haman Skrull, where the municipality provides water trucks with drinking water, how likely is it that the source of cholera is in that water that was perhaps not cleaned properly? It seems likely that um, people were drinking water, a, a number of people were drinking the same source of water that was contaminated. So you have to think on first principles that the trucks that people that were provided were the source. Now, I don't know if there's evidence to prove that, but you certainly would make that assumption to begin with. That would be the first place you would look. Cholera can spread from person to person. So um, like I said, it really has to be the stool of one person getting into the mouth of another. It doesn't have to go through the water cycle. It can be if you're caring for somebody with cholera um, and they, they've got profuse diarrhea, you can, you can um, get cholera. Um, but I don't think that would be enough to explain this large outbreak. So if we continue to not clean South Africa's water properly, and if we continue to deprive so many communities of clean running water, what does the future of diseases that you get through water look like? Well, it's, it's bleak, isn't it? Because, you know, we see this in other countries. We, we, there was a large um, cholera outbreak in Malawi, which has a poor water infrastructure. Um, with hundreds of people dying. And you know, once the bacteria is in circulation, like I said, there'll be people with mild symptoms passing it into, through stool. If that water isn't cleaned before it's drunk, then that's where you get an outbreak. And like I said, we, we're focusing on cholera, but this, essentially the same mechanism is true for a whole range of, of um, illnesses and organisms. And so if our water system deteriorates um, further, um, or people have no access to to any clean potable water, then we're going to see more of this. Now, our constitution says access to clean water is a human right, but how aware are people of this right? And is anyone listening? Not in my experience. I mean, as you know, I've, I've lived in um, urban and rural areas, um, and rural areas that um, may have one or two taps in the village, that's it. This is, this is in rural South Africa. And so people collect river, river water and rainwater. Typically, rainwater is is, is great if people can afford rain tanks, um, but the rain tanks run dry and people collect um, river water. And you know, where there also are um, very few toilet facilities, then the link is obvious that uh, if people are emptying their bowels near a river source, the, um, the pathogens are gonna get into that water source. And if you drink that water from the river without cleaning it, then you're gonna get disease. Of course, educating people about this is important because um, if you, if you have the resources to boil that water for two minutes, and cool it down and then drink it, then the pathogens will all be killed. But firstly, you need, people need to be aware of that. And secondly, they need the fuel and the time to, you know, to boil water and cool it down before they drink it. Tom, with climate change, we see the earth getting warmer and we also get some diseases that's not um, transmitted through drinking water, but that's transmitted through things like freshwater snails in water sources in local areas like where you've worked. Now, what does climate change and the increased temperatures mean for where we see those diseases? So um, we're thinking of the condition called schistosomiasis, also known as bilharzia, which is actually a worm infection, which you don't get from drinking the water, you get it from bathing or swimming in the water. And this is um, very common in a, in a belt of South Africa from the Eastern Cape all the way up the coast into Mpumalanga and Limpopo, where in some cases, uh, well over half of the school-aged children have this condition. And um, it's dependent on a cycle um, of a human and a snail. Um, and you need to have both. You need to have the human, the snail, and the parasite to make the cycle. So in the Western Cape, there's no snails because the, because the climate isn't right. So there's no schistosomiasis, bilharzia. But as climate increases, then the, the range that the snails can live on will likely shift. Malawi had, had a cholera outbreak and then they had a cyclone, likely linked to human activity, climate change. Um, and that disrupts water supplies by definition. Um, and you get bigger runoff, you know, any, any um, pathogens that are in soil will more likely to make it into a water source. Thanks, Tom Boyles. Our next guest is water scientist Aisha Lahir. But first, let's take a look at how water is cleaned before it gets to your tap.
The Reachflay water treatment works has been cleaning Swane's water since 1934. For the last six years, Eunice Mokwena and her team have made sure the water from this plant is safe to drink. Uh, we abstract water from the Reachflay dam and then it comes uh, to our plant. We add three chemicals, namely lime, which is a pH corrector. PEH measures how acidic or alkaline water is. Safe drinking water should have a value of about 7, which means it's neutral. They add ferric chloride to get the water just right. Then a gas is added to make very small pieces of dirt bunched together in foam-like clouds called flock. This brown sludge gathers until filters remove it from the water. A sand bed helps purify the water by straining out smaller bits of muck. Once filtered, Eunice checks the readings. If the number is below one, the water is ready for a last round of cleaning. We're using chlorine gas to disinfect our water. Basically what we're trying to achieve is uh, distract all the microorganisms that are in the water until it reaches the consumer. So we want to make sure that there is chlorine and there is free chlorine available to go to the consumer through the pipe so that there is no new uh, development of bacteria in the pipes along the way. Before calling it a day, she goes down to the pumping room to make sure the clean water is flowing to storage tanks. Then, it goes to your taps. Welcome back to Health Beat. I'm Mia Malani. We're looking at the quality of South Africa's tap water and its health implications. With me to discuss how well South Africa's water treatment plants work is Aisha Laher. Aisha, thanks very much for joining us today. Many of South Africa's water treatment plants don't produce safe drinking water. Why is that? Uh, more than 50% do not produce safe water. Um, most of them, it's due to a lack of routine maintenance, um, a lack of investment in infrastructure. They don't have effective operations or management, and we end up with unsafe water that gets into the taps. So are there any plants that do work well and where are they? Um, I'm always proud to say that in Gauteng we have the Rand Water is the water board that supplies water to the entire Gauteng and other outlying areas. They are actually a very good water board. They're world-class water board and produce water of exceptional quality. Um, so if you live in Gauteng, you have no, you have no problems whatsoever. The Gauteng is safe, we can be happy with the water, but Mpumalanga seems to be a province of concern. So there's a number of provinces where the water quality is quite bad. Um, so Northwest is, uh, is a province as well, Mpumalanga, parts of Free State, uh, Northern Cape, um, are actually quite poor performing with regards to microbiological compliance. So that means the water that is coming out of the tap has the potential to make you sick. There also seems to be a big issue in the free state with wastewater, so the water going out of our homes. Why does that water need to be cleaned? It, it should be treated because remember water is a finite resource and we need to protect it as well and use it effectively. All over the world we take our wastewater, we put it back into wastewater treatment works. Beautiful systems, biological systems mostly, treat the wastewater to a limit that it can be released into the river and reused again safely. Um, so these wastewater plants are part of that water cycle. So they're released back into the river, they can be abstracted again by the water treatment works and purified further so we can drink it. So we need to have that water safely treated. Who checks that the testing is done? The Department of Water and Sanitation is under the National Water Act. They are the regulator and they're the custodian of water in South Africa. Um, so technically all the water in the country belongs to the Minister of Water Affairs and uh, the D Department of Water and Sanitation will monitor the water. Um, so in the regulations, um, every municipality that is a water service provider authority, so they are responsible for treating the water and treating the sewage. They are required to monitor on a monthly basis their water and wastewater against certain limits and standards and provide that information to the Department of Water and Sanitation to check if they are compliant or not. If the tests show that they're not compliant, whose job is it to intervene? 
the Department of Water and Sanitation shop. And how often do they intervene? Recently, there have been quite a bit of, there have been interventions. Um, I can comment now on what happened on the, in the Green Drop report. So the Green Drop audits were conducted by the department in 2021. It was a full Green Drop audit. And they found a number of municipalities are not working well. They, 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 they identified more than 200 plants that are really in a critical risk category. They're really bad. Um, so they issued them, they placed them under regulatory supervision um, and told them we want a corrective action plan, which they were supposed to give. Uh, but what's said is that a, a majority, more than 60%, didn't even bother to submit corrective action plans. Uh, and that is sad because, you know, the affluent they're producing has got a direct effect on, on, on human beings' lives, on, on the environment. So it, it is quite a risk. How do I know that the water coming out of my tap is safe? So is there a way to know, a home test that you can do? How would you know? Um, there's a test that you can do for yourself. You don't need any training. Um, it's a very simple uh, dip, uh, a strip that you put into the water and it would tell you whether the water is safe or not. And if you then find that your water isn't clean, what can you do to clean it? Okay, so if you have microbiological contaminants, that means there's stuff growing in the water, there's bacteria or whatever, um, the, mo the, the quickest thing that you can do is you can boil the water. Uh, so boiling is going to kill all your pathogens and you will be sure that there is no pathogens in the water. Alternatively, if you don't have, if you can't boil the water, then you can also add household bleach. Um, so in a liter of water, you can put two teaspoons of bleach, normal household bleach, leave it for about half an hour so that it takes action, and then you can safely drink the water. With municipalities increasingly not providing water for houses or homes, let alone clean water, we have many people having JoJo tanks. So a lot of people, like you say, are putting JoJo tanks. So all well and good, you can store municipal water that has already been cleaned, but you must make sure that the water doesn't stain for a long time. Uh, because if the water stains for a long time, there can be pathogens that start growing in there. Um, so ideally, uh, what, what I tell most people is there is a UV light that you can install. And the UV light will last for about two to three years and kill all pathogens that are in the water. So a so very good option for that. Alternatively, you can also put chlorine. But then you need to measure how much chlorine and there mustn't be too much or too little. Rainwater is quite dangerous. Because remember, if you get catching rainwater from your, from your roof, the chance that the, the roof is dirty and bird droppings are always on your roof. So either you have to treat that water or you can use it for things like washing uh, your car or, or, or whatever else. And what about borehole water? Does that need cleaning or can you just, if you have a borehole, drink the water? Um, so groundwater has always been very good quality because it's stored in the earth, it filtered through the sand, had time to sit and wait there for millions of years, and we're drinking beautiful water. However, in recent days, depending on the amount of human activity there is, there can be an infiltration of pathogens, any kinds of things, filter, fertilizers, um, uh, acid mine drainage, whatever, into, into the groundwater, and you have a potential for having unsafe water. Um, so it is important to, when you drill the ball, to test the water, send that water to a laboratory to test for all the determinants that are in the standard so that you can be sure that water is safe. If it is safe and there's nothing funny in there, then great, you can drink that water, store it in your Jojo tank, put some kind of uh, disinfectant in there for your safeguard and drink the water. Aisha Lahir, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you so much, appreciate it. That's our show. We hope you're more water-wise. Until next time, goodbye.